the option is that say if I want to do something at the class level then how do I go ahead and do that right because class will say that general class level so say if there is some initialization which has to be done before the test cases are run then what to do I mean here there is nothing where we can initialize right and we never do app test test is equal to new app test so we are not constructing a new uh, class for uh, for a new object for this particular JNet class right so it's not that we can put it in the constructor also so the way uh, like what JNet has done is that they have provided uh, two three ways so one is that I mean like say you can write a method Inside the setup, you can put whatever is the initial, uh, in what you want to do one time before the class starts. Right? You can put it like this because you do not want to create new uh, objects. This is a normal method, right? It is not even annotated with that test. So how do we know what like this has to be executed only one time in the starting? So uh, annotation has been given for this one, which says add before class. So it basically means it will run once. Then the class, uh, I mean at the class level. So before running all the test cases, it will be run. If I would have used before, it would have run before test cases every time. Okay. So we'll see. So if I write it like this and see if I run it. So one exception is that the setup method where it is annotated at before clause that should be static. So let's make it as static then. From static, it is difficult to uh, get this non-static field. So that is one such constraint which is there if you use uh, I mean add before class. Okay. So second thing is let's check out add before. If we do Control Shift O, this will go away. I mean whatever was the thing here because Control Shift O is for organizing import statements. Okay. So, it will, like if it is in the class path, it, it will automatically find what should be there for before. Like here in this case, it is org.generated before. Okay. And then let's run it and also see whether this also has that dependency or not. So, this doesn't have this dependency, but the only thing is that it runs every time a test case is run. So if you see this comes up twice. Setup start, setup start. Why? Because add before means run it before any of the test methods. So here before running this test is not equal, it has run this. Okay. Before running test is equal, it has executed this piece of code. So that's why it has it has been executed twice. Okay. But if anything uh, has to be executed only one time when it is uh, when this is getting executed I mean the test class is getting executed then we should go ahead and use add before class okay so even if you use add before class I mean the only constraint here is one constraint is that it has to be uh, static and second thing is that whatever you put inside it should also be confirming to that static method because 
from a static context you cannot refer to a non-static context and that is the error which you'll see here you can make a static reference to a non-static field if you go here and see it will ask you to change the modifier to status you can do it but then I mean if that is a requirement you can do it obviously but if not then you will have to look for some other ways see here it has come only once it means that at the class level it is run not at the individual test classes level so if you would have used add before if there were like say 15 methods 15 test annotated methods uh, it would have run 15 times but not with add before class add before class means it, I mean this is as good as static stuff only once not, not more than once okay so that's how it is done here now other thing I wanted to say was like say if I remove these two right these two import statements there must be knowing I'm just retreating so see the error comes up so it, because the actual import statement is not there so one way is that if you click here you see the option you can import it so if the jar is in the class path you can see the import statements here if you have multiple way uh, places multiple uh, this is coming from multiple classes then obviously the way is to press control shift o in windows and then import all the necessary uh, import statements whatever is required so this is one thing okay now the second part was say about this uh, at I mean like say okay, about this assert equals this is this was our question right so uh, assert equals is that uh, now I mean it means this is one of the if you see like APIs methods in org.gnu.assert class and what it does is that it tries to compare two values so if you are trying to test a method now there are multiple things which can happen right one is that method is not returning anything so if the method is not returning anything in the sense that it is a void method there is no expectation at all right there is no expectation because there is no assert equals y because that method is not returning anything but if the method returns something right then there is some expectation that if i run this method i'm expecting that uh, the data should be inserted it should return a success response but it returns failure for, 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 uh, for whatever is the case so this is one scenario so assert equals helps us in comparing the expected value with the actual value and it also uh, helps JUnit framework to show a visual representation of that so it is pretty much clear to you that if it appears in green here in JUnit section the test case is passed if it appears in red then it is free so that is one of the things which is taking care of the JUnit frameworks internally but assert equals is a method which is hosted in org.junit.assert class right and it expects two values one is whatever is expectation and one is whatever is the return value from the method call it compares these two and if it is equals then assert equals returns true if it is not then it returns false and that basically translates into this being red or this being green depending on whether the assert equals is returning true or whether it is returning false so that is the, div uh, that is the meaning of assert equals so is it clear with you or any questions till now okay so let's move forward now if I go here and see what all I have put so this is going to give you idea about everything so in your test case tests the code written by the developer for a specific functionality without worrying about the entire end-to-end -end flow JNits have come out as a good way to unit test the code using JNits we can ensure that different scenarios are covered so the thing is that when you are asking the question about that should we have test methods for each of the uh, APIs right so yes but the, uh, I mean that uh, you can do that but sometimes like say if you have written like the way in which I have written is equal uh, method that, that for, uh, to test it properly I needed two different scenarios right 
one where the string was equal one where the string was not equal so you had two test apis for one test method so it is not a necessity that there has to be one to one mapping depending on the use cases one method can be tested using 15 or 16 different scenarios that can also be the case all right now moving ahead so using jns we can ensure that different scenarios are covered there are tools these days which execute jns and make sure that we know what all pieces of code are tested and what else still needs to be tested so one such tool as i described before is clover code coverage tool okay so in jnet if we have several unit test cases we can we can combine them into a test suite as well and we'll see an example of that below so i mean i'll show you what needs to be done there now let's see some of the common annotations and then let's make ourselves familiar with it so one annotation is add test so any method which you want which you, which is a test method that should be annotated with add test annotation all right and sometimes the thing is that the method which you are writing throws some exception right and you are testing various scenarios where one scenario which you want to test is that the method which you want to which you are testing should throw exception so if that is expectation that also you can write that this expected is exception not class because if any other exception comes then the jnet will obviously fail for that particular method and it will show the error also that it has failed because of this particular error now the third one is like say at test timeout is equal to 100 which basically means that once you the method which you are testing if you make that call and you will wait for 100 milliseconds to get the response if you do not get that response i mean the game is over so the jnet test cases fail all right so that is one thing now coming with add before annotation so as i said before this method is executed before each test and i showed you also how add after is also one such annotation which you can put like say if you have initiated uh, some resources like say that app new instance you created right if you want to uh, nullify that so that the object is ready for garbage collection by itself so that is a requirement you can put it in add after now add after that particular thing is called after every method call right so the basic idea is that whatever resources you have utilized before you can clean it up later on so that is the required now you have to add before class and add after class now these things uh, add before class is executed once before all the test cases start right and add after class is executed once after all the test cases have been executed have been finished right and uh, jira also like say also provides you a way i mean at ignore so what this basically does is like say if your code is getting migrated so there is some changes and for now maybe for a month this test case will fail now with that in mind you cannot put it in development right i mean if you put if you check in the code if you make it available for anyone to use then what's going to happen is i mean that if someone else downloads the code and starts working on it this uh, this particular test case will fail because of what are changes which are going on now if you mark the test case as at ignore i mean that test case will be skipped while doing run as jnet test or while running it from the main console so whichever way you have chosen to run the jnet at ignore will avoid that particular test method to be run so in this way you can avoid it all right so in this way you can avoid running it so when I mean, it provides a way to skip test cases for now and then later on obviously you can go ahead and uh, replace add ignore with add test and that method also becomes ready for testing so these are some of the common annotations which we use in case of uh, jms any questions till now okay uh, now bring out more assert statements so we have seen one assert statement which is basically uh, like say e assert equals then you have many more so you have fail you have assert true then you have assert equals which we saw then you have different assert equals has different uh, things uh, that you can expect a message and a condition or you can expect a string 
or you can expect an array of strings so there are a number of things which is possible with uh, assert equals then you have assert null as well which means that the object which is there should be equal to none so that is basically saying that i will run as uh, assert equals method and the expected is null value and the actual is the object and then we'll see whether it matches or not matches so that is out of the assert not null just saying that the object will not be null that is only requirement okay then you assert same which checks that both variables refer to the same object okay and then there is a condition that the both the variables refer to different objects also okay so that is also one such condition all right so let's go to detail and see one one time say assert not same so it basically if you see Uh, uh, the input is uh, a string expected actual. So it, may, it uh, what it does is that it checks that if both the variables, the expected and the actual, are referring to the different objects, right? So the reference is pointing to different objects. So if that is the case, then this is going to return true. If no, then this will fail. And assert same is just the opposite of assert not same. So I'm ready for assert null. And assert not null. So assert null is going to check whether the object is null or not. Assert not null whether the object is not null or not. So the requirement is different, right? So the requirement is different. It depends on what you want to do. Okay. So the, uh, if the object should be null, then you should use assert null to uh, like see uh, check for that scenario. But if the object is not null, then you should check for assert not null. All right. So that is one such requirement. Now, so if assert equals, so assert equals as we saw, that is for testing the equal condition. Assert true is whether the boolean condition is true or not. All right. So these are the conditions which common uh, APIs which you can import using import static, and without giving the uh, the uh, without giving the API uh, the object name, or sorry, the object class name, or say. Assert dot assert equals. If you import it as import static, you can just directly refer to it as assert equals. Okay, so you do not have to give the exact uh, full definition. You can use it in that way. And I've already showed you how to do it, but I just wanted to repeat it. So these are some of the common assert statements. Okay, uh, any questions till now? Now the next thing is about, like say, a test execution order. Now say if you have, uh, we saw two test cases here, right? Say if we have hundred such test cases, if if there is some order which is required, how do we enforce that? So the answer is that if the JNet has hundred test cases, right? Ideally, I mean, what happens? What I've seen till now, the way in which it has been written in the class. Is the way in which it will get executed, okay? But this is not a guaranteed behavior. This does not happen by itself. In the sense that uh, Jira doesn't guarantee you the test execution order. The tests can run in whatever way it wants itself to run. So even the method which has been given in the last can run first, and anything can happen. The method which is there in the between can run first. So the test execution order is as such not guaranteed. But if you use this annotation at fix method order and put method sorters dot name underscore ascending, then what happens is that it from here onwards, if you use this, this is one way to control the order. So the the way the name has been written, the dictionary way, right? That is what is the meaning. So whatever comes first, whatever starts with like say A will come earlier, and whatever starts with B, C, D will be arranged accordingly. So that kind of method ordering you can give by giving the sorter name as dot method sorters dot name underscore ascending. All right. So this is one such fixed method which is out there. All right. Now 
the other one is that see sometimes what happens is that the there is some common piece of code right now we have seen one class app class and there we have written some of the stuff but what can happen is that there can be a requirement where we are executing the same piece of code right from number of different test classes and if that is a requirement to do that right if that is a requirement to do that then we'll have to like say find a common way to do it so by saying a common way to do it means that you put it in a common place so putting it in a common place means put it in a class and then you refer it from everywhere else so it is as simple as that right i mean if you want to reuse it from multiple places you'll have to put it somewhere outside and then refer it from some place from all the places now the thing is that uh jnit also provides a way to do it it's called as jnit rule okay uh the only thing is that this jnit rule will be executed again it works as add before annotation so it is called before the method execution and after the method execution all right so that's how it works before the method execution and after the method execution okay uh and what it is written there the common piece of code you can get executed so whatever the common piece of code goes into the jnit rule uh i mean api so let's see the example first whatever has been put here so this can help you in understanding the things in a much better perspective okay so we see here public static class has temp folder is one test class and inside this we have different test apis as the one which you are seeing right now it is annotated with add test it has public void test using temp folder through zio exception and then above that you have add rule okay where you are creating this temporary folder right and just keeping it with itself now add rule what it does is that uh, so add rule what it does is that it says that this particular class right is a j unit rule temporary folder okay now before running the test this add test this rule is executed after running the test this is executed so that is the only meaning of it right so that's how it is done and then you have this add test now this temporary folder is from uh, uh this temporary folder is from the jnit itself so this is not a custom jnit rule it is provided by uh, by default okay if you want to write your own custom jnit rule which frankly speaking if you want to write you can but till now i have not found scenario where you have to write but uh, but since it is theory i wanted to cover it as well so that if in future and depending on your requirement such cases arise then you know what is the concept behind it and how to approach that particular uh, problem okay so there is one class uh, test rule now this test rule class is provided by the jnit framework itself if you want to write your own custom jnit rule you have to extend this test rule now if once you extend this test rule there are number of apis which i have to override once such apis apply okay now inside that apply method you will write your actual code now this piece of code will get executed before the start of any method and like once done after the start of uh, after the method is executed so before and after the method gets executed this jnit rule will be called so it is as simple as that there is nothing more to it okay Uh, so let's go to the theory which I mentioned here, then we'll move forward. So the statement passed to the test rule will will run any before methods, then the test method, and finally any after methods. So basically, it says that uh, I mean, uh, like say, the statement passed to test rule means that this is the actual uh, method call at test, which in the JNIT world is den uh, denoted by. Uh, statement class okay so org.jnit.statement that represents this method call okay 
and whenever you have the stress rule this is with respect to the statement so if you do not use the jnet words way of saying uh, this method call you can just say the statement and before executing the statement which means that before executing this method you want to run some class or run some method or run some common piece of code you can do that and that's where the custom jnet uh, rule which you will write will take care of it okay now so now the, the thing is that say now if you if you have seen the example above there is one class will variable public temporary folder folder is equal to new temporary folder you annotated it with at rule okay now since you annotated it with at rule right now that is basically saying that this is a attribute so that particular thing is the attribute of the class so uh, now you can also also put it at the method level so it can be done at the both field level and at the method level so if, so if there are multiple such rules if they are used right so the way in which it is executed depends obviously on like the jvm's implementation but uh, the field is the whatever uh, rules which annotate the fields like the one which you saw above is run first and whatever is annotating methods any rule will be run later okay now to look into that the idea is just a second let me show you to see here this is at rule now this rule says public temporary folder get folder return folder so this rule is annotated on top of a method so this is going to uh, like run after any annotations which have been put on attribute level is run so the order is rules on uh, rules annotated on fields are executed first and rules annotated on methods are executed later but if there are multiple fields then the order is not guaranteed Similarly, if there are multiple methods, the order is not guaranteed. But on the broader category level, if you have one method annotated on field, and if you have one method annotated on method, then the one which is there on the method will be run first. Okay, so that's how it goes. So this is all about JNet rule. Any questions till now? Okay, so let's move forward now. The thing is that the uh, scope of the class was about JNet, so we'll be concentrating on JNet. But to give an idea of the things which are existing in the market is one is Mockito framework, and that basically a uh, Mockito and Power Mock. So basically, is that there are scenarios in today's uh, testing world where you have to test the scenarios right and not uh, everything can't be end to end so nowadays architectures are layered in the sense that you have a different service layer you, uh, you have a different uh, dao layer then you have the database then above that you have mvc framework so all them are pretty much organized in various layers right everything is organized in the proper way okay now if you uh, i mean if uh, if you want to test a particular method it can go to service it can go to dao it will go to db and then bring your results but that is like end to end testing now someone else might be working on dao layer someone else might be working on service layer and your code is on top of both the service and dao layer if you write test cases like this there is a lot of dependency on all the layers so the idea of unit testing is that you should be clear that what is your expectation from the next layer of code right so you'll have to mock that behavior so that behavior is mock you are essentially uh, putting your uh, like designing your test cases using the apis uh, and the uh, output which you expect from there and whatever is the output which you expect from there that is only the 
I mean, that is expectations. On the, you work on the expected output, but you do not actually hit that particular method. So since, since you do not hit that particular method, you are not worried about the nitty gritties of whatever has gone inside that method because your purpose of writing this unit is to test the present code. Now whatever is the third party dependency and when I say third party dependency, anything outside this layer uh, which you do not want to test or maybe outside this class also if that is your requirement can be thought of as a separate uh, class which can be unit tested uh, separately and in between you can annotate it I mean you can write test cases which only test the functionality which is there in the current uh, class right and everything else can be mocked so that is the requirement you can use the frameworks I have mentioned two popular frameworks here one is Mockito one is Power Mocks so Power Mocks is an extension of Mockito Mockito uses uh, I mean it tests everything but there are some cases where it fails that is it cannot test final methods it cannot test public methods sorry it cannot test private methods and it cannot test uh, static methods if you want to test final uh, static or uh, private APIs that is a requirement you have to use power mocks right also market will obviously be used but power mocks will get used along with it so that is what a uh, mock framework does all right now one thing which i forgot to mention earlier was that at rule we saw and that rule is used only on non-static fields there is another one at class rule which again can be used on static fields or methods as well okay now the thing is that if you see the test cases uh, and as explaining about the scenario where I had one method and I had two different sets of data. In one case I passed Abhishek Abhishek, in the other case I passed Abhishek Ramesh. So there are different sets of data which has to be passed. So if you know the data which you want to pass, uh, you can create a parameterized test class and you can provide all these parameters and then you can be done with it. But the only constraint is that whatever is expectation the assert equals that will not change that is going to remain the same so there are obviously constraints to this approach but you can like if you want to run the same test case for different sets of inputs and even the output which is expected is the same then you can use this parameterized way of testing JNX so let me go below you will see them So if you mark a test class as a parameterized, so like at run with parameterized at class, then it will, it will basically be expecting parameters. So let's go below. So this is one such uh, class, right? So after import statements, you have this test class, and at the top of it, you have this at run with parameterized at class. And once again, just to give an idea, all these things what I'm explaining right now. They are all for your understanding, right? And everything is for your understanding only. But the thing is that I have used JNets extensively, like multiple times till now. Uh, using JNet rule or using this parameterized way is something which is not that much in practice. I mean, we have hardly used it. So, but I'm telling this so that you have an idea that what needs to be done if any need arises later on. Okay, so if you have any such requirement, you know that you have to go in ahead and use parameterized way, right? So see here you have this at run with and then you have parameterized dot class. So any place where you want to run with parameterized way, uh, then you have to use parameterized dot class, right? And then such classes should also always have this. Uh, constructor okay so if we have this constructor right uh, I mean you have to set this value and then you have the array which where you annotate it with add parameters and there you give all the data so in one case I have passed one the other case I have passed five the other case I have passed 121 right but if 
the constructor is expecting two inputs right you could have passed two data here or you could have passed three data here right so all this thing you could have done and then you have written arrays dot as list this data is returned now what will happen is that if you see the next test this is a test class right so this test multiply exception method will be run with different parameters right so it, i mean every time like say once like this multiplier will be a different value right and so one time it will be one one time um, uh, next time it will be five next time it will be 121 so the values will change okay so this if you see this method i have not written it three times it is only one time right it is only one time but uh, the answer which you will see the response which you will see will be three times why because you are using the parameterized way of running it and you are providing three different sets of data so that's why this will run three times okay so that is the use of so you can test api with different data sets using it the other thing is that the assert equals uh, or whatever assert statements have written to see whether the test case has passed or not passed that is not going to change so assert equals will expect that both the values have to be same then it has to be a case for all the inputs which you have provided in that particular parameter list it's not that for one case it will match for the other case it will not match they are basically two different methods okay and if in this class you have two different test uh, annotated methods then for both of them all this data will be used so if you don't have such requirement you have to write two such test classes so these are some of the nitty gritties behind writing JUnit classes any questions till now Okay, so now the third thing is about uh, test suit, right? So the thing is that uh, Maven, like say if you have go here and if you see you have this test package, right? Now inside this test package, I have one app test, right? If I have five such test classes, how do we run it, right? So using right click, run as JUnit, I can run one of it. But what if I want to run all of it? So Maven, way you can do it. So you click here, do a right click, go Maven build, then you put it as test only. If you put it as clean install, clean install is going to run the test cases also. But if you just want to run the test case, you can put the goals as test. So it will run all the test cases which is there in this SRC test Java folder. Anything which is there will be run. Okay. If anything which is there will be run, then if there are 15 test classes here, all those 15 will be executed one by one. Okay. But say you have different scenarios, right? You have one scenario where you want to run, say, I mean, uh, like one, like say five different sets of test cases only from that list. If that is a requirement, then this Maven thing will not work for you. So there is something known as test runner will come into picture. So basically you create a test suit. So you have a class, right, which you annotate in, uh, which you annotate in it, add run with, and then you give the class name as su.class. And then the same way you have you'll provide the annotation at su.suit classes. And here you will mention all the genuine classes which you want to run. So out of these 15, if you want to run only five, you can mention it here. Okay. Now, once you mention it here, that is nothing more to it. This is where your JNET test suit ends. And the next thing is how to call this, right? Because run as JNET is not going to run it. So, the way to call it is you'll have to write a custom uh, class to do that particular piece of work. So, here we have test runner. Now, this test runner, if you see what it does, is that first of all, this JNET test suit class it uh, gets, I mean, like whatever is a JNET test suit, right? We go here, this is the name of the class, JNIT test suit. Right? Now this class you get a you use JNIT core uh, 
class from the uh, from the unit framework and run the run classes uh, method right and you pass this particular class name so what this basically signifies to the framework is that this particular unit test suit class is suit class run this test class so basically get, get all the test methods from this particular suit class and run all of them one by one by one okay so that's how it is done so this is about test suits and that is the last part where we want to discuss in JUnits. So any questions there?